I've always been an uppity woman. I don't run, I stand and fight. Cause I'm gay and I'm proud and I'm angry. I enjoy being a dyke. That's it. Greetings. I am Susan Wells, one of the Brunswick Four, though actually we were originally the Brunswick Four minus one because I didn't get arrested. The Brunswick Four were me, Heather Beyer, who's now Lamar Van Dyke, and Pat Murphy, who's now deceased, and uh, Adrian Potts, who's now Adrian Rosen. The plan was to go to the Brunswick House for open mic night. It's pretty loud vibrant place so it seemed like anything goes. Heather and Adrian had heard new words to the song I enjoy being a girl and so it would be a good place to go and sing that. It was our turn and I chickened out because I was very much shyer than I am now. So those three went up and after the first two lines, the sound system was cut. The crowd loved it, even without the mic. Those gals sang nice and loud, everybody loved it, clapping, cheering. I looked round and I saw eight police officers coming down the middle aisle and then I realized, shit, they're coming to our table. Next thing you know, the cops were um, physically removing Heather, Pat, and Adrian. They were pushed into the squad car, and off we went. Well, we didn't know where we were going. Pulled us out and uh, sat us on a bench, and we realized we were at a police station. They told us, just sit on that bench and be good. Like, are we arrested? Why are we arrested? What's happening? We weren't told we were arrested. So eventually he said, okay, just get out now. And so Adrian was saying, well, we're not leaving till we speak to our lawyers and uh, demand a phone call. <laughs> and he said, ooh, you've been watching too much American TV. You're not allowed a phone call here. So we're getting pushed out the back door and we're just walking as slowly as we can just to annoy the guy. But then he said, get moving. So he pushed Adrian. And so she sort of stumbled forward a bit and then backed up and just went like that and I think hit him in the nuts. So he spun her around and punched her in the jaw and his ring opened up a little cut on her chin. As we came through those first doors, we kind of saw these four burly guys standing in front of the doors into the main room. They were telling us just to get out, get out, go home and a squad car had pulled up already and they were put in the squad car. I tried to get in and this guy said, what are you doing? And I said, uh, oh, I thought I was arrested. And he said, just go home and be a good girl. Pat eventually came home. Well, she was really frigging angry because they really manhandled them this time. Pat's arm was wrenched around her back. She thought he was going to break it, and then he pushed her so her head, head hit the wall. We were forced into a small room. He produced a little bag of white powder, threw it in Pat's lap to say, oh, look what we found on you. She was really outraged and said, yeah, I'm going to take the case. So we thought, oh, we're going to have to fundraise big time for this then. This sort of became quite a big thing in the gay community. Chat helped organize some dances because Pat had been the vice president at Chat. So anyway, the money was raised, the community came together. It just became a spark that started a lot of um, people in the community thinking, okay, it's time to fight back. And I recall that those eight original cops told their story and it seems like they'd gotten together beforehand to arrange a story. 
So I was a good witness because I had not been arrested. So then I got up and kind of blew holes in their whole account. I don't even remember how long it lasted, but it was packed out every day. Tons of women came every day, some of the guys, and were really supportive. It was a pivotal moment, really. The Brunswick Four brought that division, sort of eliminated that for a while. It was nice, you know? Everybody thought, you know, we need to move forward together and uh, fight for our rights and all that kind of stuff. So, so that was a big celebration, yay. I'm angrier now than I was then. I was 25 at the time. I was kind of shy and like, I wasn't an activist. And well, I was after that happened, right? It made me into an activist, so it was a good thing for me. Now I would have been up on that stage like nobody's business. It's too bad I didn't get up on the stage and sing them, because I certainly would now, and I can sing them here if you like. When I see a man who's sexist and he does something I don't like, I can tell him that he can fuck off. I enjoy being a dyke. I don't dress up cute and frilly. And in clothing that I don't like, I just go in my jeans and stompers. I enjoy being a dyke. I've always been a lesberated woman. I fight for the revolution now. I snuggle and I cuddle with my sisters. And I don't need a man to show me how. I've always been an uppity woman. I don't run, I stand and fight. Cause I'm gay and I'm proud and I'm angry. I enjoy being a dyke. That's it.